There we are. Oh. We're live and we're recording. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone who are all eating their lunch. And that's made me really hungry. Hi, <laughs> I was quite like. I would quite like to be eating my lunch too. So we're here today, first of series three. So exciting. I can't believe we're saying series three. Series one started back in um, the beginning of April last year when we did the lockdown. We're now on lockdown 437. <laughs> or maybe just three. <laughs> They're inventing lockdown numbers and tier numbers. You just never quite know where we are with all of this. So, um, yeah, we're here. We're still here. We're still doing this. And so excited today. I've got Kate and Eleanor from The Big Draw with me. And, the, and this is great because I Pure have done The Big Draw. We participated in The Big Draw when we've been running our big art fairs before. And I absolutely love it. And the public love getting involved. And we've done live drawing sessions. So, no, this is this is a passion of mine. And we've got lots of SGFA members as well um, of Pure. So lots of um, Louisa and Vincent and... Um, Felicity they're all SGFA members so they're all massively into drawing so oh. this is a great one so quickly I'm going to just quickly share the screen with the big draw website so you can all know what you're looking for <coughs> and know that you're in the right place when you find it here we go share so there you go that's what you're looking for um, the Big Draw website, and you can click on all the various buttons across. And at the bottom of the screen, you'll see here we have the support the Big Draw call to action. And that's where you can click through directly to their website and see all about it. But we're going to talk about it. So you don't need to worry too much about that now. But it is good to know, you know, where the website is, how to find it, what it looks like and know that you're in the right place. So that is that. Close the video. I have to get I've got to get my hand back in on Crowdcast because I haven't done it for a little while. And I've been doing lots of uh, clubhouses have been on Zoom because it's been private stuff. Um, got to get my hand back into Crowdcast now and the, the uh, dexterity of moving screens. Hello, Sophie. Sophie's with us. And hopefully, Sophie, you're keeping an eye out over on Facebook for me and can bring across any questions. Um, that anyone's got over on Facebook. We're live streaming on Facebook and we're live streaming on YouTube. So keep it clean. I had to set the settings. <laughs> I had to set the profanity settings, so don't swear. <laughs> I did think that was funny when I was looking at the settings this morning. It's got a profanity. I set it at medium. So we should be okay. Mild swearing. I wonder what okay. medium profanity is. <laughs> don't go no, test it. Everyone here, yeah. don't go and test it. No, no testing today. <laughs> we don't need it close. We don't need it turned off today. That would be terrible. Yeah, we're all we're all on. Uh, we're live streaming on Facebook, so that's all working. So yeah, thank you. Here on you're here on Facebook. Thank you, Sophie. So that's brilliant. So any questions over on Facebook? Let us know, um, pop them in the chat, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, and then Facebook will show this to more people. And go and um, like the Big Draw Instagram. Kate and Eleanor, do you have your own Instagrams as well? Uh, yes, yes, I do as well. So you'll easily find me following the, the Big Draw's Instagram. I think it's just at, at K underscore J underscore underscore Mason. There you are. So follow Kate on Instagram and Eleanor. I'm L E L underscore Pender. I think there Eleanor was already taken, so I had to <laughs> abbreviate myself. <laughs> but you two shall find me it? following the big draw. Um, yeah, so follow the very big hard draw to find. <laughs> the big draw is quite easy to find on Instagram. So everyone, follow the big draw. Uh, you're hopefully already following Pure, and if you're not, I'm disappointed. Disappointed. Or we'll right. have to come back and say thank you so much for finding us. Yeah, yeah. So, and I do have my own Instagram account, but I quite frankly would <coughs> encourage you to follow me because it's mainly just pictures of Ted, who you must all be sick of by now, my dog, and my cat when she gets starts sunbathing in front Aww. of the log burner. That's pretty much, and sea views when I'm out because I go out walking to get inspiration and to get my head into the right space to do writing all the programs and all the courses and everything. So, yeah, that's all you get on my Instagram probably not worth following but hopefully you're all following pure anyway so yeah lots of likes and hearts and everything on facebook and then facebook the algorithm will go yeah we love you and um show this broadcast to more people but you know it's all being recorded and you can come back and watch it at any time as well so yeah that's housekeeping you know where to find us and you know you know what you're doing and sophie will bring across any questions from um 
Facebook. So I'm going to have a quick chat with the girls just to find out a bit about you, about <laughs> you as people. So, Kate, your title Ooh. at the big draw is? She's the boss. Boss. Head she's honcho. The, she's, she's the director. <laughs> You're asking me, yeah. 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 I'm asking you. <laughs> I think there's a sort of there's a, there's a slight lag on it. <laughs> so you are yes, the, you're yeah, the, the boss. director of the big draw. Yeah, you're the you're like me up here. Can you do? Have you? I was perfecting this this morning for someone when I was doing some mentoring. Can you perfect the scary Paddington Bear stare when people are slightly starting to annoy you? I did that to someone this morning. They went, "Don't do that." It's really scary. <laughs> <laughs> That's my boss face when I'm like. I'm annoyed. Be prepared, oh, everyone. You know what it looks like now. <laughs> the dead eye. <laughs> so how did you, yeah. what's your earliest memories of art, Kate, and how did you get into this world of art then? Okay. Yeah, so I think there was a slight lag on it. Yeah, so yeah, sorry, yeah, I'm just right. what you were saying before. Like a BBC three-second delay. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. In case one of us swears. Uh, so memories of art. OK, let's have a think. So my whole life has pretty much been drenched in art, culture, heritage, museums, art galleries, being dragged out to castles as a child. Um, absolutely. I, I suppose thinking, you know, trying to think about very early memories of art. I do have some very early memories of of puzzles, actually. They were puzzles. They were I think well, I've looked them up since. One one of them was the Lady of Shalott by Waterhouse, and the other one was um, Ophelia, you know, the one where she's drowned in the river mm -hmm. by by Millet. Mm -hmm. And I think I was playing with them when I was only about three or four. I didn't really know what they were then, but I just remember they were sort of very brightly coloured, like jewel like. I remember playing with them with in the texture of this very thick rug. And then as I got older, I did the puzzles, and I and I. I remember them so vividly and I remember the imagery with them and I think that's I didn't know what it was called then but that's when I started to get more interested in the pre-Raphaelites I would say at that early age so sort of by about my girl's age nine ten I knew there was a, a type of genre that was called pre-Raphaelites but I think at an early age it was more about the bright colours and and the pictures that they made in my head. Colours are really important aren't they I mean they're, they're so symbolic Colours associated. I love the colour on the wall behind you. And is that on the wall behind you? Is that a, a Welsh dragon? It is, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, What's so yeah, colour is incredibly important to me as an individual. Mm. So Tell us about um, that. yeah, it plays a huge role in my life, I'd say colour. Um, so you can't see it, but my wardrobe is very colourful. I do choose colour according to mood. Um, certain colours remind me of certain words or, or, or motions or anything. I have a very strong relationship with, with colour. Um, yes, that is a Welsh dragon. And yes, I am Welsh. I know I don't sound Welsh, but my family are all Welsh. My partner's Welsh and um, Welsh, yeah. Welsh is the thing. There is a thing, isn't there, about if you, um, about colour and word association. Um, I think it's a, yeah, there is a word for it where you associate when people people associate words with colors when or colors with words when you see them i can't remember what that's called but there is a there is yeah yeah i mean i wouldn't say i'm in that category but yeah there's plenty of, of famous artists that are symbolism synesthesia. say um, that again it's something like uh, symbolism but with a synesthesia synesthesia yeah. that's yeah. right so yeah synesthesia yeah. yeah so i think you can it happens across sound color um sense taste and there are some very famous artists that actually we've worked with we've worked with some of them who produce their art very much linking in with that with their the way that they think and they interpret things mm, yeah creatives and the way our uh, brains work as creatives just means we're using that bit of the muscle more but i think there there's also that thing about tendencies isn't there you know that we come to this life with a set of tendencies and one of those is this pre preference for color or seeing things color. I know all my 
all my dreams are colourful. They're all in full Technicolor, which can be quite disturbing. I can't lie at times, can be quite disturbing. But all my memories, even my memories of a small child are all really colourful. And a lot of people have that in black and white, but no, it's all very colourful, which I think is that part yeah. of my brain um, is very well pronounced. And what about you, Eleanor? What, yeah. what did you, um, what are your earliest memories of art? Oh, um, I mean, I think I have the, I don't want to say like a typical memory, but I remember uh, making things in, in, in school when you're allowed to be a bit more crafty, a little bit more messy. Mm. Um, Playing. <laughs> yeah. Um, Playing. I mean, possibly. I mean, I wouldn't want to just say it's like definitely a clear memory. Um, mm. But I, I think, um, no, I, I agree with you on, 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 on with in terms of color mm. and and i i know i think you know when you go through the, i don't know if anyone, everyone goes through the phase you think oh black and gray is very professional and i know it always <laughs> struck me as being so boring um <laughs> and i'm like i don't I, I think one of my first suits i got when i was pretending to not work in the arts and then obviously quickly realized that was where i wanted to be it's um it was actually a navy blue one um and i was trying to be slightly different but yeah it's um i, I think it's making different assignments or trying to interpret assignments for, for, for school from a creative perspective um, I think we once had to create a, we could do a, a, we had to create a project in primary school on how paper was made and I did a cartoon strip and created a little character that was a pencil I don't I think I might have been eight or seven I don't know but I remember the little pencil I think I may have copied him off the Microsoft Word paperclip there we go. We take oh, inspiration from oh anywhere. Oh my goodness, you're that young. Okay. I am, well, we probably I'm, can't talk to you now. <laughs> young, that old, whichever way you wanna you wanna spin it. Um, uh, but, I was, but, yeah. I was thinking. Oh, she probably got that off of what was that? Um, there was a there was a drawing program when I was growing up um, mm -hmm. with a guy. Oh, can't remember. And he had a little character called Morph. Yes, I remember Morph. Yes. So here, and there was a program on TV with Morph, and he had. There was always a pencil. Tony Hart. Tony yes, Hart. I remember Tony Hart. Yes, I think. Thank you know, goodness. It, it could have been. It could have been Morph. Maybe I just don't remember Morph as well as I do the Microsoft Word. Yeah, yeah. But no, I, I, I played in. Yeah, I think that was one of the few programs my dad would let me play on the computer when we were, when it was, you know, when a huge desktop computer at home before the internet was paint, and I wasn't allowed to use anything else. <laughs> I was worried I would break it, but there we go. We're all a bit worried about that, the kids near the internet. But there we days. go. Yeah. Oh, that Sorry, wasn't don't. a problem. There we go. Back then. And you've got the lovely. Um, we were talking about these just in the green room. These lovely pictures on the wall behind you, which you were saying you bought when you were in Paris. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to give you full screen for a minute so people can see your pictures. Okay, there you go. There we go. We're just looking at these two, these two guys here. Yeah. This, this, this one isn't, isn't, isn't mine. That's my other half. Uh, yeah, no, we went to Paris in March of 2017. Um, I, we just moved to to Bristol, and um, yeah, it was my Christmas present. And then, oh. I, if anyone re recognizes them, they're probably. Um, because you all, you too have been to the Sacre Coeur and Montmartre and um, seen all the lovely um, artists painting around. But I just, I suppose, I just, I, I like the um, the way that you can see the paint on the canvas. I've always been been quite fond of that. Um, so yeah, yeah. We, we we got those two a, a little while ago. I think we might have lost Kate. I was going to say I'm, I'm slightly worried that we've lost Kate. So <laughs> hopefully she'll okay. be able to return. Yeah, at, at the moment it's just you and me. So um, ah, you're there, but we can't see you at the moment, Kate. So um, hopefully you're. I think sometimes what happens is that because um, Crowdcast uses 1080p. Sometimes the bandwidth can struggle with that um, if there's a bit of a connection issue, you know, a lag. We've put them at one o'clock, these talks, because then hopefully everyone's having lunch and they're not all on their computers. But it does happen if you get a surge in your area. We have lost the odd guest on occasion. But um, we, we can't. No, hear, we can't. Can you add to that or not? You. I'm going to have another go at adding you back, Kate. There's, I'm going to remove you. Don't don't take this personally. I won't. I'm good. Uh, right, Kate's back. I've removed you, and I'm going to add you back in, Kate. So I've just got to find you. There she is. 
Kate, because there's a long list of people now in here, so I have to go and find you. So I'm going to ask you to come back up on screen, and then hopefully that will bring you back up. Because we were loving that, hearing all about the the um, paintings in Paris, and um, it's really interesting. <laughs> You're very to, kind. You're very kind. It's really but yeah. interesting to understand how people come into this profession. I was also mentioning I love your shirt, and when you were saying about those um, early decisions about um, picking mm -hmm. suits, oh, I remember that so well. I'm wearing my white company jumper. <laughs> yeah, this is, like, this is like my go-to. I have a few shirts. I I, I lecture part time, but I, I it's it's just quite nice to to have suppose I go to that you know is. is it's just a little bit, a little bit of fun, but yeah, yeah, I um, I did um, I did go for something slightly different. Kate says it couldn't publish. Can you re can you reinvite? Yes, we'll have another go. At but re just to whilst oh, Leslie yeah. is is reinviting reinviting Kate. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I've always really liked being able to see the the paint on the canvas, and I think I I'm not sure at what age that was something that that struck me. Um, Kate also triggered a bit of a memory by mentioning castles. My my dad is a big uh, historian, like amateur historian. He really likes, um, he too liked battlefields and castles. I didn't go to my first um, <laughs> uh, theme park until I was 18 because my childhood was um, was castles and battlefields. Um, and uh, I'm not entirely sure if that meant that that, that was something that I, I ended up using. But I think when I did art in, in school and yeah, later on at A-level, oh, there she goes. There she um, <laughs> Yeah, She's... buildings was something I, I took. I, I certainly used as a point of inspiration. Hello. Yeah, I love. I love that. I love the fact that you know we're so privileged here, aren't we? Um, in the UK, especially to have so many. Um, we've got the National Trust. We've got English Heritage. Mm -hmm, we've mm -hmm. got all the private residences as well. I mean, just recently, obviously within the allowance of um, being allowed to do so. We went on a trip. Now, where did we go? I'm just trying to think. We went. We took our son to the National Motor Museum at Bewley. Mm. And that's got the most beautiful museum as well in their art gallery museum as well. So they went in to see the cars. And uh, myself and Ted, we did do a little Instagram post while we were there, uh, went and had a little look around the art gallery. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, you know, when we were allowed to go out and travel again, I would definitely recommend it. It's got the beautiful grounds. It's got the motor museum if you're into cars, but it's also got a beautiful historic house and this amazing um, art gallery as well. And the village is quite nice as well, but it was at the, we were in a lockdown of tights, so there was no eating inside or anything. We just went and had a walk around and what have you. But we are so privileged and Sussex, isn't there something about, because we're based in battle, um, mm -hmm. I think there's something about in Sussex, we have the most castles in Sussex. I'm wow. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. But I think there is something about, there is a, a, um, a thing. Now, someone's just popped in a question, and that's great, because I'm going to encourage you all, if you've got questions that you want to ask to Kate and Eleanor, do pop them in the ask a question box. And we will come to them at the end. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to just let you. Kate, Kate's gone for a Kate's, walk. Kate's going to. She's 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 just left a comment there. She needs to just check on the kids. Okay, um, that's, there we that, go. That's okay. It's lunchtime. Need yeah, to check exactly. On the kids. Exactly. So I think when Kate gets back, we're going to talk about the big draw. So if everyone wants to take a little look at the big draw through the call to action and um, familiarise themselves, we're going to talk about the big draw and all the other bits of it because it's not just one thing it's a festival you've got the john ruskin prize mm -hmm. you've got all your patrons etc so going on. i think it'd be really interesting for um you to in your role so your role um oh, we yes. were talking just before kate went kate yes. was the boss <laughs> kate Honcho. yes she's the director and your and your role within the big draw is mm -hmm. communications and marketing manager so right. I, okay. I talk about the big draw and all the variety of wonderful stuff that the big draw does yeah. and I think that's what I like the most about it is the fact that you have the big draw and you have the big draw festival and everything else but it's not it's not as if there's a particular focal point within the year where activity picks up it's it's Sorry an ongoing that. thing it gets um you know there's there's always events there's always yeah. things cropping up and and there's that really brilliant engagement and and aspiration people want to be able to to create the work and, and connect with their, their their creativity which is almost certainly something that we saw last year as well 
Yeah, I think that's lovely. That um, and that's why I that's why I gravitate towards the big draw is is because it's ongoing all year. You're not just popping mm-hmm, up to mm-hmm, do mm-hmm. like two art fairs a year or one event mm-hmm. per year. You are there all the time, adding amazing content and keeping people engaged and active right through the year. And so, yeah, if you could tell us, you know, give us a uh, your elevator pitch on the big draw. One of you, I don't know mind which one. Sorry, my husband's left something that's beeping on over there, but we'll just ignore it. <laughs> that's okay. It Kate, could be some worldwide one. leader wanting to, you know, speak to him, but we're, he'll just have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> so are you hearing me all right now? Yes, we yes. can hear you perfectly. Yeah, yeah that's lovely. So I'm going to give yeah, sorry Kate, about that. I'm going to give you sorry. the screen, Kate. And if you could just give us, you know, an overview Ooh. of the big draw and oh, yeah. um, what it's all about and yeah just give us kind of like a, um, a I will do. Yeah. invite us in there you go you've got the so i got this oh that means everyone gets to see their messy bedroom okay. <laughs> that's all right don't Never worry mind. <laughs> we're all working from home yeah. we can see the dragon properly now though that's good yeah well if i get cut out because my kids are online and everybody's online in our house as well yeah so no it's, it's a real pleasure to be here thank you to leslie um for inviting eleanor and myself to join everyone today and it's lovely seeing all the all the comments on the side of people saying that they've they've taken part in the big draw in the past so that i mean it's lovely when you when you hear that the big draw has been around a while um i think what i often find is that people have preconceived ideas of actually what they think the big draw is and does so I'd like to start there if I may, but it's actually, this is our 21st year of the big draw. So 20, 21 years actually of running a charity and we've never been in receipt of any revenue funding or support from any of the, uh, the usual players that you'd imagine. So it's very much always been very sort of entrepreneurial, raise our own funding as best we can, <clears throat> be independent. So I think that has a, a bearing on the way that we work and sorts of programs and partnerships that we have. So in terms of the big draw itself, what many people still think is that the big draw takes place either just on one day or over the month of October, and that that's the festival. Now, whilst October does remain to be our official festival month, and we do promote it as a festival month, actually our programme is, as has already been mentioned by both Leslie and Eleanor, is running all the time. We don't have any uh, lulls or down periods, if you like. So it's it's constant, really. So we have a theme that goes out each year. Last year's theme was climate change, uh, big green draw. So that was all about shining a light on people doing impactful work around uh, eco environment, climate change from a cultural perspective, if you like. And we always go out with our theme at the end of February. So actually, that's where the shift over from each year is. And that's where we'll start to plug in with their their work, their art, the partnerships, everything that we do will then work, shape, work around that, that, that theme for the year. So it's all the time, it's not just about October. We'll be going live on our theme for this year, which I, I can't obviously tell you here what it will be, but we will be going out on the 2nd of March with that, with all the new assets and the branding and everything else. So that, so that that's happening all the time people are engaging with the the big draw festival in a whole range of different ways so from you know individual artists right through to obviously the more familiar uh players that you probably already know about schools art galleries museums cultural institutions etc but it, it is also a much bigger picture than that so we also have quite a few business partnerships we also have event organizers that that get get involved and run their events who are coming perhaps from the care sector from maybe retail outdoor space, shopping centres, uh, public, civic, local authorities, that, that sort of, it's, it's very, very broad in terms of who actually runs their events, <coughs> excuse me. So in the main, we, we do run a few of our own events, but not very many actually, mainly we there to help promote, support, champion, amplify the voices of, of what all of the event organisers are doing. Um, I'm sorry I nipped out, so I probably missed it, but I think maybe what Eleanor was, was talking about was, um, last year obviously with covid and and what we obviously saw was a surge of event organizers wanting to use the festival in- infrastructure to help promote obviously not a physical event but maybe an idea a concept a promotional a campaign uh, a, a book a show an item something much more much more um showcasing online which we've always done as well at the big draw but we've just been doing a lot more of them last year with digital so that's been okay 
but so it, it is it's a much bigger picture than people realize it isn't it isn't and it isn't just about traditional drawing either um it's brilliant that we still have lots of organizers that are doing going back to pencil and paper as it were and we absolutely um that that's where it all starts really but we're looking at much more of a, a bigger picture that encompasses uh, more visual literacy and looking at mark making across a whole range of, of different sectors. And, so, and we do work across different sectors. Our patrons, our ambassadors, our partnerships are coming from across all different sectors. So looking at how mark making, if you like, underpins a whole range of different professional practices. So, you know, being creative isn't obviously just about uh, isn't reserved just for the arts and cultural uh, creative industry sector you you see that creativity obviously across a whole range of different sectors and people use drawing and mark making to underpin a whole range of different disciplines obviously so we do work a lot around that and looking at the next generation of of thinkers artists designers etc so that's that's a big aspect of our work and the sort of partnerships that we develop apart from the festival we do lots of other things so we do also do uh, conferences and events and seminars and all of those sorts of things loads of partnership working if there are people on the call that are interested in working in partnership with us drop us a line we're very open to ideas the other big program that we run is the uh, John Ruskin prize so we'll be doing our sixth edition of that hopefully early next year subject to funding and COVID um, it's a national contemporary arts and crafts prize it's the fastest growing interdisciplinary contemporary arts and crafts prize in the country so the last edition we had three and a half thousand pieces to um choose from and we selected 41. so it, that really brings the two aspects of the charity back together which i would say is john ruskin so again something that people might not know about the big draw is that there is a, a very strong link back to john ruskin so in fact the big draw previously known as the campaign for drawing founded back in 99-2000 sort of was actually uh, initiated with some initial seed funding from the Guild of St George which in turn was founded in 1873 I think, um, maybe 83, by John Ruskin himself. So there's a direct thread straight through the Guild into the campaign for drawing, very much building on this idea of slowing down, uh, some of the things that you were saying Leslie, slowing down, better understanding our environment, our relationship with our environment, management and with to nature, sustainability, obviously at the time industrialization, social reform, but very much the fragility of nature, what's happening around us. And of course with drawing, he was a huge uh, avid drawing fan. Um, you looking at, at drawing as, 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 as a way of seeing things, not just looking as a way of seeing. And so we, we bring these things out across all of our work, not least with the Ruskin Prize across different art forms and crafts, but also in into the big draw. So there is a much bigger, bigger picture going on there. So I, th I feel like I've just talked quite a lot. So I'll be quiet for a bit. <laughs> I'm going to unfocus you so you don't feel like you're you're on the stage on a platform. <laughs> so you've got you can share the stage with I us. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> but that was great that was really informative and and I think the thing that re really like jumped out of me for me from what you just said was the connectivity and the fact that this is dra using drawing as a way of seeing so it goes across every sector it's not just within the creative community it's across everybody and I love the fact that you work with charities and you work outreach with schools and you work with care homes and you know it, it's getting creativity in its essence of therapy and how it's so good for us you know when we were talking the reason I ask what's your earliest memories it's not just a you know random question um, is that why why is it that we were all so we all loved and found so much you know happiness and pleasure in art as a child and how can we bring the essence of that to help us get through especially difficult times like now how do we use that in today to help us get through all of the challenges that we're facing today so I, that's what i particularly um it resonates with me with the big draw is that you are you know across all of that and and so accessible to everybody and it would be lovely if lots of our you know you were saying the platforms there for you you encourage partnerships and the platforms there for people to showcase how would you like people to do that how did it talk to me a bit about how that looked last year and how you would like that to look this year i know you can't reveal the theme i'm very sad 
I'm very sad you're not going to tell us the theme, but um, we'll all be watching on the 2nd of March for the theme to be revealed. But thinking about how it looked last year, and obviously there was a bit of, for all of us, a bit of firefighting last year and, you know, just making, trying to make everything work as we went along. How do you, you know, reflecting on that, how do you want to see it looking this year in 2021, appreciating that a lot of that will still be online, I think, Mm. yeah yeah i mean so yes i mean i suppose one thing to say is that yes like many very small charities we had we you know we were struggling to survive and we continue to struggle to survive we're by no means out of out of the hot water yet we were very lucky we did manage to get some of the arts council's cultural recovery fund um october so that's made um that's been a huge lifeline actually for us to see us through the next sort of six months or so. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a sticky plaster. I mean, our, our sustainability, our model does depend on, because we've never been funded, does depend on our business model working. And our business model relies on the cultural ecology being afloat and people having the ability to be able to pay uh, a festival subscription fee for the year. So to your question, there's lots of different way that, ways that people engage so in, in 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 the most sort of simplistic sort of off the hanger way if you like once we've gone out at the uh, at the beginning of march basically everything is ready so if somebody i don't know somebody over in kenya for example because we do have an international uh presence so we have uh, event organizers partners around the world actually it, it depends it's the last few years it hasn't changed much it, it's sort of between 25 and 27 countries that we have a presence in so say somebody overseas or somebody in the uk they think oh that's an interesting thing we've got an event that we're already running or we're looking at something we're developing internally at our theater or our shopping center or whatever it might be or our school they would then think how can we use this platform to amplify what we're already doing that's often the starting point um hopefully they look and they realize they don't have to just do it in october which is always incredibly frustrating for me when people think it's just about october and they use it because then they get the most out of their for their money as well so if the school gets the early bird and pays their 40 quid from from march they can do as as many we want them to do as many things as possible and if they tag us then we can make sure we're sharing and and tweeting and all the rest of it and helping them with content so but yes, that's, so that's in the main, people that's incredibly online. reasonable, Kate. That's an incredibly reasonable fee, forty pounds, for people to participate. That's early bird for the for school. Yeah, so that's early that bird for, for school, school but it's still a very, prices. very reasonable price for someone to pay to get involved with such a massive organisation that's worldwide with a communications team, as we're seeing with Eleanor in place. Um, team of one. Team of one, but that's yeah. okay. You, you know, I've got a team of two doing that. Yeah. Kind of stuff. You know, we're very pure is very similar to you in mm. that you know we don't take funding and we have yeah. to, and so our business model is very important. It has to be viable, um, otherwise we won't be here. And like yeah. you, we have a responsibility yeah. to be here because people need us like you. So we have a responsibility to charge a reasonable fee in order to be here in order to do the work we do. So I think that's incredibly reasonable. What other, so if I, I was an artist or an organization, what would I be paying early bird? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely it. We just, we either, that's our model. If we don't have that, the big draw falls just yeah. one years down down the toilet, basically. So um, yeah, so it's obviously we have different, different uh, rates. So last year we, so yeah, 40, bird, 40 pounds early bird or 50 pounds if they miss the early bird for the year is the school. That's our, our <clears throat> sort of lowest level. And in previous years, so not, not including last year, our individual artists who have been wanting to do something, we've put them in the same category. And we don't mean individual artists who are working with the, the Bodleian or the British Library, library and have got a big budget and resources and free space behind them. We mean, um, an individual artist who wants to do something, <clears throat> excuse me, impactful in their local community with a local church or group, whatever. Mm. Um, so previously, we, that's also been in that lower category of fifty pounds. However, last year, and we'll do the same this year as well. I think it's the least that we should be doing. Really, is we waive the fee for any individual artist who wanted to get involved last year. And we'll be doing the same this year. So if there are individuals out there that would like to do something, as soon as we've gone out live, we'd love to be seeing 
you know what you're doing online goodness um, gracious i think you're i think you know, what, the way that code has in particularly hit yeah the artist community mm. well i think the way that COVID has particularly hit individual artists mm. makers yes yeah. and you know freelancers has just been horrific so yeah. and there hasn't um, been any we would support, really. you know, it's something that we can do mm. absolutely so if there are any no, exactly there's not really been yeah any so within so, members here or you know within the artistic community any individual artists who are already doing activity but as kate said would like that greater support from the big draw to have regular activity year round as part of the program um that would be amazing that's that's one of the things i think that's an incredible big draw. that's yeah. an incredible resource for artists and lots of them are doing you know they've we just did a survey out to all of our artists and we've got about five and a half thousand artists on our mailing list that we regularly communicate with you know so our embedded community and most of them came back and we did a smiley face, do a rating on a smiley face as to sales and um, support and studio time and making work. And there was a lot of very sad smiley faces on self-promotion and um, and on selling. But there was a lot of happy faces on studio time and creating new work. So mm -hmm. there's loads of artists out there who've got all this new work yeah. that's all been made during this intense period of time with COVID and they will be looking for vehicles to be able to, you know, show that and get involved. And this is an amazing opportunity for them to do that. And hopefully yeah. they will also see that if they can afford it, and I would encourage artists in this, that it's lovely that you guys are offering that for free. I think that's wonderful. But as you said, if you can afford it, if you are in a position to afford it, pay, pay. Give, do the support, the big draw and pay something because it's a charity and you, you know, you get out what you put in. So if you are able to afford a little bit of a contribution, then do so. Do put a little bit in because that will mean that the guys can do something for somebody a bit more for somebody who absolutely can't afford it and could never afford it. So, yeah, as I say, although I yeah. think that's very generous. I do. Yeah, that's right. And it may be that. And it, it may be that you know in in future years we we just won't be able to do it again i don't i don't know i can't foresee what was going to happen over the next yeah. 12 months next year at the moment um at the moment i think that you know in terms of i mean it, it, so i suppose the only caveats are that the if they're they they do need to be an in, in individual artist because what we sometimes have found to be honest we don't it's not really coming from artists what we sometimes find is um we see really quite big rather well-heeled well-funded larger charities often with corporate arms who will um get a, an artist to register and say that they're an individual artist or something and then they're not they're not it's not even really it's not even really about the artist and we actually we want to showcase the artist in that instance yeah, it's yeah. it's actually about this much bigger organization that should pay the fee if they want us to showcase their work otherwise why why should we yeah. use our our assets so it's yeah so they do it needs to be that if they're doing it for the, off their own steam basically and we need them to register yeah they so when can they know, start we, we need to know they who they start? are so we can keep an eye out for them yeah when can they start registering so, so yeah so the th so the theme the theme goes out on i think it's the second of march isn't it mm -hmm. Eleanor? yeah so that's what we, by that point we will have all of our we're just we're just finalizing the uh, branding identity for this year's theme we just be well actually we're just signing off on that this week yes so all the assets and everything will mm -hmm. be ready for for then and, and go out and i mean in terms of what people get for them if there are people that maybe don't fall in the artist category but are from a small organization so the other levels that i can tell you are so the if it's a, a small unfunded grassroots organization it's 75 for the year do as many as many as they want and if it's a small regional say it's a, a regional art gallery it might be a local authority museum and art gallery mm. it's 150 and then we have some separate categories that are more but they are more they are reserved for what i would call national or international facing organizations uh, or business we have separate uh, conversations with with business so I don't actually think in terms of what they get it's um i think it's it's actually competitive to what to what other organizations 
offer and what you get i mean what you get in in your for, as part of that exchange for the fee and any money share any money exchanged is still it's somebody's budget that they're spending and we're always very mindful of yes. that and we want people to get value for money um i mean what you get is you get there's sort of three different areas so there's all the there's all the digital assets that you get so everything that you need to if you like dress your website your social media campaign all the different digital assets lots of tips we do things like um sponsorship template letters oh, and things great. like that just in case people want to try and mm. recoup some of their costs we do encourage people to charge their events if oh, they yeah. feel that they need to and if it's like 50p on the door why well, don't see Absolutely. why they shouldn't try and recoup mm. some of their own costs that they've had in this then there's all the physical stuff the pack that we do and it depends on who it is I mean, if it's if it's a school they're going to be much more towards the certificates end and mm -hmm. stickers and all that sort of stuff um obviously if it's other organizations they might want to go slightly slightly different assets that we but so there's all the, the the posters and the stickers and all those sorts of things that that we do sometimes we get deals with uh pencils and stationery companies or uh, we did eco bags last year degrade uh, biodegradable bags and seeds and that sort of stuff mm. um so there's basically a pack and then there's all the the online stuff and i think probably the middle to bigger organizations probably like that as well yeah. because you can get you know there's opportunities for blog features and content and all that sort of stuff I think this would well. be great for so there, there, there's there's lots of different things it's really yeah. up to the people to access it i think this is great for galleries who've been closed yeah. for a while mm. so the galleries that have all been you know closed during all the lockdowns this would be a great thing for them to do to get involved with you and do some blogs and pay their fee and then just get you know help you and you will help them i think it's a great thing for galleries to do you know individual artists absolute no-brainer but you know for the bigger organizations and especially the places like the as you say the private um the museum galleries like the Towner and the uh, Turner and Contemporary and what have you, Delaware Pavilion yeah. um, down yeah. here that we have. I think that, you know, it pure, as I say, we'll definitely be doing it um, and um, getting involved with you guys because we want, Oh, that's lovely our, our philosophy is that we want to support those people that we want to still be around after all this is done. Mm. So um, we wouldn't be sticking mm. by our um, ethos if we didn't support you. And, you know, as I say, mm. we're not a charity. We're a business and we have a business model and we don't take funding from anywhere. We are, run a business model like you. But we're all it's a social enterprise because I've run it since 2009, pretty much on the yeah. um, basis of looking after it started off looking after my artist friends basically <laughs> and now my artist friends are all over the world so uh, it's lovely and you know I like to find like-minded individuals and groups that we can work with and support and encourage our artists to get involved with um when we're you know when we do these things so I think you know the big draw for me is an absolute definitely you know oh they're saying the screen has frozen Oh dear. So hopefully that uh, might be their I'm connectivity. Just, yeah. We'll just I think keep, it might be them. Yeah, I'm, we'll just I can keep, still see you too. Yeah, we'll just keep going. It'll all be yeah. recorded. So anyone who misses a little bit um will be able to, I'll tell you what I can do. I can check on no, it's all going still live on um still restreaming. Yeah. So it's obviously okay. it's I was fine. just going to add I'm a I'm a very but, um, um sorry, go on, Kate. All I was gonna say was just to round off that last section was um, and it may be that the people who have, have kindly joined us on the call are already very, very familiar with the big draw. But what certainly I find in my in my travels all the time is that people think the big draw is some sort of conglomerate. Um, and I think it's because the big draw has a strong brand. There's longevity there. I'd like to think that there's integrity there. You know, we are very choosy about who we partner with. Um, and we haven't we haven't talked about partnerships. We've talked about event organisers, yeah. but we also have lots of partnerships, yeah. and that's not yeah. that's separate from going through the paid membership scheme. Yeah. So we have partnerships with organisations that are sort of marketing or creative, uh, creative or curatorial, fundraising, all that sort of stuff. So that that's not about the membership fee. That's a different conversation. So, but I think ultimately right. the bottom line is there is three to four, three to four of us efficient yeah. part-time running a global yes. program and people think that we are this enormous charity and when we did some evaluation a few years ago um because i just got so sick of this and i got sick of people saying we were getting like half a million pounds from the dcs or something um we did uh, some evaluation 
And I asked them, how many people do you think full-time equivalent are running this charity? And it came back as 20 full-time equivalent. And obviously the reality is that it's four part-time uh, yeah. individuals, three to four part-time individuals. We have, uh, Kate, I feel you, because we have exactly the same thing. People think Pure is this multinational, you know, conglomerate that's run, it been running for, you know, with loads of people behind the scenes. And yeah, there's me, Sophie and Chris most of the time. And then, and then there's lots of other like lovely people who work with us, who've been working with us, like Vincent, who does our, um, who's our tech guy who does hanging of exhibitions and Hildegard, who's, a, they're all artists who've all been with us for, you know, since 2009 and help out. Um, along mm. the way and we pay them to do th those particular tasks yeah you become a victim of your brand and a victim yeah. of that but that's okay that's okay um you know it's just working out how to make the best of that now you've got such an amazing brand how do you make the best of that in order to make sure that you're always going to be there in the future and also that you don't self-care is really important that you don't burn yeah. yourself out both of you because that's what we're always, you know, I just did a membership to a, an online club for my guys because I was like, you need some downtime and I can't take you anywhere. So why don't we do this and mm. go and do some cooking courses and stuff just so that everyone um, feels they're having a bit, they've got permission to have some downtime and some, you know, self-care. And you must look after yourselves. We are very holistic here mm. at Pure. We do meditation. And we do wellness as well as art and business because, yeah, it is important. You take care of yourselves. We need you. We need you to stay well. <laughs> Don't lose well, your think, voice. I think that all the team do, do creative activity. Good. <laughs> they, they, we, all, yeah. we all, are all also creative as well, um, all, all four of us, um, um, always. So, yeah, we do, obviously we have to do all the business end of things mm -hmm. as well. Um, I mean, I have to do a lot of pulling in of sponsorship and stuff to make up yeah. the gaps mm. that, you know, to keep us, us going. So we do have to do a lot of that as well. But we do, we are all very creative. I mean, Sandra and Matilda aren't, aren't obviously here with us today, but yeah. Sandra's a, a filmmaker and a photographer. Um, I do draw. I do, I wouldn't, not an artist, but I do regularly sketch. I've always drawn since I was a child. Uh, so I'm an avid sketcher, but I, I also love knitting and sewing and your craft making and all that sort of stuff. So it's intrinsic. It's very much part of my identity growing up as a child. Um, drawing, making, sewing, making, and doing those sorts of things. So it's. It, I think there is. It's. It's natural for all of us. And I mean, I, I can't. I don't want to speak for Ellen, but Ellen is also very creative. So we're bringing all of those skills in, which is why often people say, "Oh, don't you bring a? Who's your this?" And we're like, "No, that's us." Oh, who does this view? Oh, no, that's us. That's too. us. Yeah. So it, it's in house. We do it all. Yeah, we do. Not being funny, but staff. literally our in own. our meeting yesterday, I was talking yeah. about the Instagram. Do you remember what I said to Sandra, Kate? I was, I was like, oh, I really liked. She she posted recently. There was this um really brilliant um. Uh, little um, reel on Instagram of potato printing and making wrapping paper and Sandra's like oh I really don't like that and I was like I thought that was great oh, she's going to be so cross with you she's going to be so cross with me I it's fine I've said it. it now but it was brilliant and I was like did oh, you I make that? that I was like I wonder where she got it from she's like oh no I did that and I'm just like that is that's commitment that yeah. like so that all that she stuff is that, made though. all that stuff is oh, made I loved that I watched it about really three or four we make our own content yes yeah. original yeah, yeah we but, do yeah. too yeah, I think it's, that's um, really important, yeah. isn't it? Make your own yeah. original content. Be honest and true to yourself. Mm -hmm. People need to see who you are. That's why doing things like this is so important because people need to see the face behind it and they need to understand there's only four of you. So don't be mean and support <laughs> us. Don't be meanies. I think that's like, also... That's what, that's what I'm you need to say. say. We have had to get yeah. quite tough over the years. Well, I'm yeah. the newest member of the team and it's yeah. just... I mean, I haven't been with the Big Draw for very long, but it's... They were really lovely, and it's just it's like having to do work, but you're doing work with 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 friends, and it's it's just it's a really lovely atmosphere, and there's all that it's the fact that there's that really clear message of creativity and everyone coming together, and it's 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 a real team. Yeah, it's it really is. Nice. It is important to have the clarity yeah. of I'll, I'll, and it, they, they work nice. incredibly closely. Yeah, you can see how uh, when I've yeah, had it's a I've very very tight team. Yeah, I've had conversations with Kate and Sandra, and it's lovely. I love it. It's just lovely. Um, there's a lovely vibe about your team. 
I think that's the word. There's a lovely vibe. And that, so, you know, if you get involved and you invest in it, you're going to be working with some lovely people. And that's really important. But don't forget, Kate, you might need the death's face. <laughs> I'll need to watch Paddington Bear again. I've forgotten what that looks like. <laughs> Give them that face if need be, if they start being yeah. too much trouble. So we've got some questions. So well, I think you know we what? need to ask. I'll tell you what I have got. I've got. Go on, Kate. I've developed my mother's Harrogate lady stare. Oh, good. I, I oh, don't use it at work, but I do sometimes use it on on the teachers at my girls' school if they're being horrible. Yeah, and it's on. the Harrogate lady stare developed from my mother. And it's I'll show you so I can do it. So it's sort of like don't okay. let me laugh though. So, Sorry. So she sort of goes. <laughs> That's good. That says so much. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> that is. That is profanity in a stare. The worst thing is that my youngest daughter, my youngest daughter now does it. <laughs> my daughters do it now. I'm like, stop it. Stop all doing my it. Kids, it. All my kids do the look. Yeah. All my kids do the look. Yeah. They say, mum, can you do the look? And um, and then they'll say, all my friends are terrified of you, mum. And I said, why are they scared of me? I'm a softie. And they have you seen your face? Have you seen that look? <laughs> I think the Har I'm going to try the Harrogate ladies look now. That is that is quite a thing. That is quite a thing. <laughs> right, we've got some questions. So we're going to do some questions now from the audience. So the first one is from Vincent. Drawing is so important and sadly undermined and not valued for a long time. How does the big draw encourage children in schools to draw? Well, we ha have kind of covered that. But if you have anything else to add. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree with, with you, Vincent. I, I mean, that's sort of our every day we hear, and it's not just in schools, it, 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 it's, it, which is why we talk a lot about visual literacy and that idea that there needs to be parity between more traditional literacies and visual literacy, that idea that um, reading and writing, of course, is absolutely vital. And I'm not, I'm not saying for one second that, that it's not, but in terms of having that, that parity with visual literacy is absolutely imperative. And I would suggest vital as we have become such a digital uh, visual society and and things are moving so quickly so it's so important so yeah so to your question about young people we do we do go into schools and obviously we've not been able to do it so much recently but we, we do sometimes go into schools and we, we bring people in from different sectors so we could bring it we might bring in a, a more of a sort of traditional drawing artist who draws that sometimes we'll do that but quite often the teachers are looking for us to bring in um, somebody from a slightly different sector just to try and make the case to the kids to understand better because what they find is if you bring someone just coming in they just do some from some some sketching the kids often say i can't draw we hear that every day um and they also think oh gosh well i'm not going to be a i can't be a famous professional amazing artist if you can't draw like i don't know quentin blake whatever i'm never going to do it so we come at it often from a slightly different angle so it might be so for example we've brought in a um pattern and a fashion designer into into a school and we got them to share their sketches uh, from their sketchbooks and their storyboards and the thinking behind how they came up with the designs and the, the kids were really interesting because it was more applied thinking it wasn't just showing a, a final product they could see the application of the mark making of the drawing skill and then of course at the end they said and here's the fight finished item and they were all like wow you know they, they sort of got it and then they were asking questions about so i could work i could work and i can use my skills in that area in an actual job and we're like yes of course you could you know you could go into architecture or animation or three design or modeling or physics all of these things can be using mark making in different ways another another one that we brought in was a concept designer to a school up in sunderland uh, an amazing chap and he does the um concept design sometimes for marvel films one of the marvel films had just come out the week before <laughs> so we went and he he showed all of his sketches his storyboards and everything and they they were just absolutely transfixed and then they were all saying gosh so i could i could do this i could have a viable career in this industry i could use my 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 love of of being creative and drawing and making up and i can still get paid for it and have a good job and something that i enjoy doing and then they were asking how much she earned and it was all that wow stuff. so it's absolutely essential yeah, and so stimulating to do that yeah. i know you've got lots of patrons haven't you you've just a, have you just recently announced a new patron emma or has she been around a little while i saw i think i saw oh before. emma stibben yes, yes emma stibben she's uh, she's quite new Mm. Yeah, yeah. So she's um, oh god, 
must have been before lockdown so i was going to say a few months but it's probably a year now already <laughs> yes emma stibben does the most fantastic um uh, she, i mean she's very actually very ruskin and morris inspired but very uh, john ruskin inspired her work mm -hmm. you know she has he documented through drawing the changing uh, glaciers um and he did it through through sketching and very early photography but really sketching and was one of the first people to actually have some sort of evidence of, of early climate change sort of a real pioneering thinker in that way and she a lot of her work revolves about going back and revisiting some of that her work's absolutely wow. beautiful and obviously brings in um, environmental climate change issues as well. Mm, so presumably that's why you were you looked to her last year when you were doing that as the theme. Yes, yeah, and because of her links through to um, Ruskin, yeah, and and climate change, absolutely. Do you yeah. look to appoint a new patron every year, depending on the theme? Is that something that you look to do? It's really not as um, it's not really as organised as that. It's, it's a bit more organic. So we have we have patrons and we have ambassadors. So the patrons that we tend to have have, in the main, been there. I mean, I've been at the Big Draw eight years now. It feels like it's a lot longer, but eight years. And we're very lucky that we still have patrons going way back. So people like Quentin. Gerald Scarf, Posey Simmons, these were people that were there from its inception. So, and that's wonderful. So we've still got those founding patrons and then there's, there's, there's newer people that have come in over the last few years. And then we also have ambassadors who tend to be, they tend to be, I suppose, a bit more collaborative. So instead of me, say, going to a patron with a very specific thing and saying, it'd be great if, would you be able to, you know, support us with this? Um, and obviously they're very busy. With, with ambassadors, I suppose it's more it's more of a two, you know, they'll say, hey, I've got this great thing, what do you think, let's, let's try and do something around. So it, it's it's a bit more of a fluid, it, it gives us a bit more flexibility, I think. So And it's a way of bringing in, um, what's the word, I suppose it's a way of bringing in fresh new blood as well into the, um, into the charity, yeah, yeah. from different sectors as well. Yeah, keeping it all fresh and alive and also giving you some support in, in the um, critical work that you're doing, if you've got people there at least feeding you in with some inspiration and because you know as the boss I know that I have to spend some time thinking and planning oh I just lost you there for a second Rosemary. That's it, right? yeah I mean in terms of the the process I mean that's the, the bit that's all that's actually the bit that I find easiest and I think um in terms of for me I feel like I'm I'm weaving everything together. So I've got this web of ideas and, and I'm very lucky. I've got a lot of contacts. I've been around for a while, 26 years of working in, across all the different sectors. Um, and I'm able to bring in those things and sort of weave it together. And, ooh, and then they put that idea there for a bit and we'll just bring that into line and we'll bring those together. There's, it's very much that behind the scenes. And, and that, I, love, I love doing that. I love bringing creative ideas and, and curating those sort of ideas and bringing the right people together to make things happen it's it's all the other stuff it's all the um it's the administrative stuff i think that it, like with all of us that we have to do that is just like yeah wears, yeah. You, down, wears you down definitely wears you down that's a definite critical team member that i have in my aspirations it's like a housekeeper but i can't have one of those so can i have a admin keeper for the for the business who does the filing mm. oh i would love a pa hey. I know. Oh, I, love I. A, I love a PA. Mm, I would love a PA, but that's a long yeah. way. That's a long way off in dreamland <laughs> with what we do. Because yeah, when you're working grassroots, that's that's how it is. So I think we've got a couple of other quick questions. How much for a group of artists to get together and run a project with you? I was. Eleanor, do you know the answer to that question? How much um, is it? For I a group? I don't actually. So um, we're relying we're relying on. We um, are, and there appears to be a yeah, bit of I can, however, answer the question, where are you based? Ah, good. Um, where are you based? Kate would say that the Big Draw is based in the UK. We are a national organisation, so we are based everywhere. Technically, their office is based in London, but that doesn't mean that it's a London-based organisation at all. Um, Kate has the statistic on, is it less than 3% of the Big Draw activity takes place in London? Did you hear that? Yeah. Did I get that right? I think I got that right. I'm going to say I got that right. Um, but I'm actually in Bristol. 
keep talking. Just yep. gotta go and open, I've just got to go and open the door. <laughs> this is live, people. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm in Bristol. Um, I'm not sure exactly where Kate is. I'm, I'm somewhere in, in London. But, yeah, the, the office is in London. But we're, we're, we're a UK organisation. Um, so, um, but as we've already said, with the with lots of international um, events as well. So, yeah. So you're you're like us. We're ba we're based um, we're based in Sussex, but we're based everywhere really. So, um, and we have um, a very big base um, in the southeast region because that's where I live. That's where I know most people. So, and how? So, Kate, yeah. if you're still back there now, yeah, so, so how suppose, much for a group of on, artists? Yeah. How much would be uh, it cost for a group of artists to run a project together with you? Yeah, so it de it depends. They'd have to get in touch. Again, it would come down to resources that they have yeah. behind them. You know, if it's a bunch of artists who and they, you know, if it's a bunch of artists who are saying we ha are working with, I don't know, I don't know the Midland, the Midland Arts Centre. I don't know. They're working hmm. with a regional museum. Um, they're bringing us in to run a program of workshops, blah, 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 blah. Um, but they're asking us to lead on it and to, to register. Then I think then we would be looking for a fee from the museum because it's sort of that back way round because there's resources there that, you know, the access is in terms of the spaces being offered for a start. Mm -hmm. It will be publicized by the museum. They'll have PR and marketing behind them. That's resources. That's that we. Those are the those people will have all of that behind them, and presumably, and they should be. The museum, if is is hiring them, sure will be paying for the artist's time. We yes, hope. hope. Um, yes. So it, it's it's more for if it's you know it, it would just we just need to. It, it, I think of that we'd have to look at in each case. I mean, if it's a bunch of artists, and they're literally all wanting to do something together locally, but there's no literally no resources or budget, then and then I, I. I imagine it would be we would be free, but we would need to have the we'd need to have that conversation yeah. with them about how we get them signed up and um, just clarity around resources. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that seems absolutely fair. If it's someone who's got, as we said before, if you feel you're in a position where you could all pay a little bit and contribute, do so. If you're genuinely in a position of hardship where you really just need the help, then, you know, all of our organisations are there to help. And we do lots of stuff that is just free access for everybody. And then we have other levels that um, where other people who can pay do pay. And I think that's, you know, that's the best way to do it is treat each case on its individual merits, isn't it? And also with the honesty from the people who are asking. So I think that kind of falls into this next question, which is from Fran. I think, I think as well it... Yeah, sorry, carry on, Kate. No, that's it. I, that's fine. Oh, okay. Um, so the last question, um, and I think it kind of segues into the same thing, is can individuals work with the big draw? In 2004, I was involved with an artist group with lottery funding. We drew with willow weaving and used seeds and soil drawing on pavements in Horsham Town Centre. Well, I think that sounds amazing. But I suppose she's thinking about developing an individual project and then finding a location. And would that be something that she could put in as a project? I think the answer is yes, if she contacts you. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Sounds amazing. I've seen lots of this. I mean, um, I mean, the idea would be to get the organisation. I mean, uh, quite often, yeah, we would say to the artist, if you've got that, a great idea, approach the organisation. Um, obviously encourage them to pay the fee you don't want to be out of pocket and then get them to employ you as as the lead artist I mean I just we're always very obviously just making sure that artists are being paid by these organizations for doing the work yes yeah very being important. paid being paid is a big part of you know everything we do and, and you know encouraging them against the money mindset of scarcity and you can't charge enough no you can you're doing a legitimate thing and you're providing a service mm -hmm. and it's got a fee attached to it you know we all do stuff for free don't we? Yeah. you know we're doing this today for free we all do stuff for free but it has to be um considered and why are you doing it? You know, we're here as a serve. We are here to serve as you're there to serve. So we would do something like this for free. Um, but there are other things that we wouldn't do for free. And um, yeah, it's, it's just understanding what, you know, where the boundaries are of that. I think contacting a council that has been given some money and um, suggesting a project like that that could be inclusive to the town would be great. So go, Fran. Mm. Go, Fran. <laughs> yeah. And actually, on that, on that last point, that's a very good point, actually, Leslie, because if um for example a local authority you know if 
and we have seen this happen before becoming because we just don't i mean i would love to have a person in our team who just the whole time targeted local authorities yes. and said hey do you want to come and sign up to the big draw this year but of course we don't we don't have that sort of resource so no. <laughs> sometimes they do and they, it's happening organically yeah but, um but the idea would be that you know if a, a local authority has paid um, wants to do it and they've sort of come in under a local authority fee which is higher you know and it's they're coming in as an umbrella then it, it's in our interest and, and theirs for them to have as as rich a program within their offer uh, as as possible and so i i mean i think probably a group of artists approaching a local authority and saying you know if you pay the fee we can work with you to create this incredible program and you can bring in all of these other local museums and art galleries and resources in, into that offer um, I mean, that, that saves a whole heap of work for us because we haven't got, sometimes, you know, we'll have like five or six different people ringing up from an area and they're saying, oh, we're, we're wanting to, and we're a bit like, we haven't got the capacity to facilitate your partnership. We can't do that. You need to get your own partnership together um, and then and then come to us because we just, we just haven't got, we haven't got the time. We haven't got that's enough bodies on the ground yeah, to, to do that for you. That's where the opportunity lies really here, guys. Any, everyone who's watching and listening or watching on catch up, that's where the opportunity lies. The local authorities and councils have been given pots of money to support the um, events and arts industry. Come up with an idea that can be all embracing. I was thinking of an idea that someone suggested to me the other day, which was celebrating the unsung heroes in your community. And you can do um, get a group of artists to, you know, work with some of the people who've been doing you know delivering prescriptions and people who have been um doing voluntary work for your local council and do work with them and produce an outcome and this is an amazing vehicle to use for that and there are pots of money um and then create the project and then go to kate and eleanor and tell them and you know pay your fee pay your fee out of the fee that they're yeah. going to pay you yeah, so that's a that is a really good idea. So anyone listening, there you go. Top tip. <laughs> that's how you do it. Or come to an art organization like Pure. You know, we would be considered in that. Um, yeah, uh, Horsham aren't supportive. Well, find. Yeah, it is finding going up one level. I know Rother have got Rother and Wilden have got money. Um, but Pure as well. You know, we would be keen for a group of artists to come to us with an idea. And then we would do the subscription and support them delivering the um project so yeah mm -hmm. i'm saying to you come up with a get together and come up with an idea and come and pitch it to me go on yeah i mean on that on, on Edith's, Edith's comment about about horsham all i, all I was going to say to, to edith was um well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that they're not being supportive but i was going to suggest that we have we have also quite a few times in the past um where artists makers designers project managers have have got in touch with the local authority and they have been a bit like oh i don't know i'm not really sure all that sort of thing and but they've managed to at least persuade them to get onto a meeting onto a zoom or something and if if we you know we're always very happy to do that if that helps leverage a conversation um because we find it can it can help you know if they are actually hearing about the publicity that they will get then sometimes they change their mind because that's often the bottom line is they want the, the publicity and the promotion. That's really interesting, isn't it? So you will, if they come up with an idea and open the conversation, you will jump on a call and help pitch. Yeah. There you go. I don't think you can say fairer than that. That has been brilliant. Thank you both so much for giving us your time today and telling us all about the big draw and how everyone can get involved because the all the normal stuff has gone galleries art fairs and everything and you know it's just the stuff that you know you know us in the grassroots and are doing that um is helping keep these artists going so i think you've offered something just amazing an amazing opportunity for them to get involved some ideas to get them stimulated and and then eleanor will be there doing all the comms and all the all the marketing and you know oh well me and the rest of the team it really is a <laughs> is a team effort believe me there are three wheels uh, four <laughs> wheels on this <laughs> on everything that comes out of the of the big draw but yeah it's um it's it, it's it's really lovely seeing the events that the artists come up with and how they will work together with the theme soon to be revealed soon to um, be revealed and um and yeah no we will we will support um everyone as 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 much as we can um, brilliant yeah. thank but you if, so if much. you're not sure as kate said then you know 
have a have a good think and, and then by all yeah. means get in touch yeah so you know how to get in touch with them you can dm them on instagram you can um there's all the contact emails etc on the big draw website which we've got as a call to action at the bottom here and definitely follow them on instagram because we all need to know what that theme is on the 2nd of march and uh, thank you guys so much it's been absolutely invaluable you've got one more thing to say we are also on Twitter and Facebook. And ah. if you do want to get all of our news every week, we have our newsletter, which is the Big Draw newsletter. And so you'll see on our homepage how you can sign up to that. But um, sign yeah, up. if you want all of the news, um, the, the, the newsletter is a really useful scoop up of everything that's, 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 that's coming up. Everything shiny and new. Uh -huh. okay. And that's a new issue, a newsletter every week, you say? Mm, yes, we do. Wow. Wow. <laughs> We manage, we manage you how much is coming <laughs> we, we, we manage one a month <laughs> i don't think i have the capacity for more than one a month but that's that's great so i definitely encourage everyone to sign up for your um newsletter so that's on uh, does it pop up on the on the website um, um there's a box right on the right hand side right on the home page um subscribe to our mailing list you just pop brilliant. your your email address in there brilliant. and the big draw big news will be coming your way and there you go. So I think that's definitely you need to do that. Lots of su new subscribers. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much. Been really interesting and really, as as Jane says, incredibly inspiring. Well done. Big, you know, high five and thank you from all of us for um, a joining us today, but B for everything you do. Uh, it's incredible. And uh, just keep doing it, please. Thank you so much for having us. Thank oh, you. Thank you, Leslie. And You're thank you, everyone. Welcome. Yeah, everyone will be able to watch this recording here in Crowdcast. Yeah, thank forever. you, everyone. And uh, and then it'll be on our YouTube channel. And I'm going to send a copy of the recording to the Big Draw guys, so Eleanor and Kate, and they're going to put it on their channels as well. So you'll be able to see it there. So lovely, and hopefully, maybe we should have we will schedule a catch up in the um, autumn, nearer to um, October, and have a catch up with you and see how, how everything's going. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be October, Leslie. That sounds great. Nice. Uh, I know, but <laughs> remember, I have a schedule too. Leslie. I know, I know. I'm just saying, as Kate says, we are an annual program. We're, <laughs> we're, yes. we're, there is something about October. Maybe everyone feels that October is a good month because school's already started. It's not the summer. I mean, and and yeah, it's it's not. You, no one started thinking of bonfire night or uh, or Christmas yet. So in the know, maybe it's just how it goes. I think I hate that expression in the art world, but in the art world, October is art fair month. So it's when all the big art fairs happen and you're and so everyone's kind of in the mindset of yeah. you know, art. So oh, September yeah. you're still getting over the summer and getting the kids back to school. Getting, October, over the summer. getting over the summer. And then October and then November, you're like, okay, now we're in heading towards Christmas. So October's a moment. You have to mm. grab these moments, yeah. don't you? Lovely. I will really look forward to speaking to you both again. Take care. Stay safe. You too. And uh, stay safe everyone who's been watching thank you so you much and um, we'll see you all again this time next week unless any of you are joining us tomorrow for our plaster cast workshop and then there are quite Ooh. a few so we'll be uh, watch, uh, watch our Instagram I might try and do a reels probably not <laughs> go into competition with the uh, with the potato that's exciting <laughs> but, yeah Tomorrow, tomorrow we're doing a plant oh, yeah. workshop <laughs> and then and then next week at the same time we'll be doing our next talk and so next week is with Kurt Friedel he's coming from Virginia Tech in America to talk to us about psychometric testing which is going to be mm. really interesting so understanding your tendencies and how you can use that information to be more successful so that'd be great all right you take care Take care, everyone. Lots of love. And we'll see you either. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Leslie. Leslie. You're welcome. Take care. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.